NVIDIA, BAM! 3090 is getting cheaper, and AMD confirms that they're not going to allow you to do what you want with your CPU. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this fine Friday morning. Let's start off today by talking about NVIDIA's BAM, which they're making in partnership with IBM. Or rather, you could call it their big accelerator memory. It's big because it's solid state storage for GPUs. NVIDIA and IBM are partnering together to create an interoperable SSD setup with a proprietary API to put on the back of a GPU so that you don't have to worry about CPUs anymore when it comes to reading and writing and doing all the things that you could possibly want to do because there's plenty of different graphics setups right now, whether it's in gaming or if it's just in professional workloads, we're actually fetching data from the SSD and then going through the CPU is a huge bottleneck because the CPU is just too slow. It can only handle things like a linearly, whereas a GPU can just do a million different things at once and so it's faster for that specific reason this is one of the main purposes behind direct storage with gpu compression it's going to allow us to actually have faster loading into games because the gpu is going to start to handle some of the things that the cpu gets overwhelmed by and that's kind of the goal here of the big accelerator memory it's to extend gpu memory capacity and enhance the effective storage access bandwidth while providing high level abstractions for the gpu threads to easily make on demand fine grain access to massive data structures and extended memory hierarchy. That's how you pronounce that word. The description of the concept by NVIDIA, IBM and Cornell University cited by the register reads. So this is actually a really interesting piece of technology that could change how things move forward when it comes to how your PC is set up. You might not necessarily use as much onboard storage when it comes to just like loading everything onto an M.2. It might be baked into your GPU. AMD has kind of had GPUs that had like one terabyte of storage baked in, but they didn't really have the framework behind it like NVIDIA and IBM are going to be implementing with this if it ever comes out to a retail store near you. But you can bet your bottom dollar it means more expensive GPUs for everybody. Don't you want to pay more for your graphics? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! But in case you actually don't want to pay more for your giraffics, it turns out that uh, th th they're getting lower in price. We've been talking about this over the last few weeks. We talked in yesterday's episode of Hot News about how Asus slashed their prices of GPUs in Australia by 25%, how prices just seem to be coming down over the board. NVIDIA is dropping their prices to AIC partners. And now for the first time in over six months, the RTX 3090 in Germany and Austria is below 2,000 euros. So prices on GPUs continues to decline in many different regions, and it looks like we're actually seeing a brighter future. Even Hardware Unboxed confirming the Australia story about the RTX 3080 Tough Gaming OC. It was $22.99 on the 14th, and now it's $14.99 as of the 15th. So prices continuing to come down. They're sliding, they're slipping. Which GPU do you want? What price does it need to be at? And do you think you can get it before the year's out? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to let you know what the price are on crypto stocks bitcoin up just a little itty bitty guy up to 4858 not really a whole lot of movement there ethereum up three percent however being up to 2826.99 and dogecoin up 1.3 percent to sit at 11.6 cents speaking of things that are up your prospects and hopes of apple might be up to or down depending on which part of the reviews you paid attention to yesterday when it came to Apple's Mac Studio and their studio display. It turns out reviewers got their hands on them behind the scenes and the Mac Studio actually looks to be quite the heavy hitter when it comes to professional applications. When it comes to the multi-threaded score on the CPU, the M1 Ultra appears to actually be as good as Apple was kind of positioning it to be. However, what is not as good as Apple was positioning it to be was their GPU. They claim that it could potentially perform as good as an RTX 3090 while drawing a ton less power, whereas there wasn't a whole lot of testing that found that the 3090 was anywhere near the same as the M1 Ultra's GPU. And in fact, when it comes to Geekbench 5, the 3090 absolutely destroys it. When it comes to video games, obviously the 3090 destroys it. It doesn't look like if you're wanting to play video games that getting a $4,000 professional studio setup in a little itty bitty canister is the right way to go. You might want to buy a giraffics card. Uh, a giraffe! Who knew? Giraffes? Giraffics. Like the movie? <laughs> giraffe sex the movie? It's like the park? Giraffics park? Must go faster. <laughs> I 
I'm kind of excited to check out the M1 Ultra potentially for all of the production we're doing here at UFT Tech, but I'm not going to be buying it for the Jurassic Park. But one of the disappointing things when it came to Apple's launches was the studio display. Number one, it's way too expensive for roughly the same specifications as LG's Ultra Fine 5K, which has been out for the better part of half a decade at this point. Many professional people have been using that display and the studio display doesn't really give you anything on top of that besides their webcam. And according to all of the reports, the image quality on the webcam is absolutely anus. And it's so bad that Apple says they're going to be trying to fix that with the firmware update coming out sometime soon because it's it's just bad. And even though it has center stage auto framing, it's just it's not good. Don't do it. The general consensus, even based on the specs before the reviews came out, was that this is not going to be a display worth buying, and the reviews seem to confirm that. So Mac Studio, yes. Studio display, no. Go straight to the Netherlands. I meant like the nether realm. <laughs> Like go to the nether realm, like the underworld <laughs> and then land the Netherlands. Yeah, that's I, I now have a bone to pick with the Netherlands. And some people might have a bone to pick when it comes to AMD locking you out of overclocking on the 5800X 3D. This is something we we're hearing behind the scenes, seeing it pop up in BIOS updates and now AMD directly confirming it themselves with them saying that it kind of has to do with the voltage. The voltage on the 5800X 3D is going to be significantly less on these new chips because the 3D vCache just does not scale well when it comes to increasing voltage and in fact it could potentially hurt your chip so they're going to be removing actual overclocking of the CPU frequency or adjusting the core voltage but you can still do things that are like fabric overclockings or memory overclockings or anything that's like the the side the t secondary overclocking that you would potentially do on your system that still remains but when it comes to like actually manipulating your chip they say nay because it's too fragile it's like the new employees hand skin. He cuts himself on things all of the time. He's he's bled so many times since he's been here. It's not even funny. That's ex exactly what the 5800X 3D is. Is that too far? Can I reveal that about you? Do whatever you want. That's not true. I need your consent to talk about your weak hand skin. Go for it. Thank you. Because if you say no, the only person who hears about this is Catelyn. And the only person who's going to hear anything from me later is you tomorrow for This Week in News, where we go over the hottest tech news that happened this week. I'll see you then. Goodbye, friends.